What is it with schools these days? Kids laughing, playing games, but where's the learning? Well, these kids are doing something most of their parents don't even understand. You can start with not having to know how to read, but you can already learn how to code. Cool! It worked! It worked! <laughs> yup, this robot race in a Boston school is the result of coding. We had a kindergartner today who was way, way better than I could have ever imagined. I think as adults, we tend to underestimate what kids are capable of, and when you give them the right tools, uh, and a, the, a motivating tool like a, a robot to make it interesting and interactive, okay. you'd be blown away at what the kids can do. Turn. So we got to this point, and the program was pretty good. So let's let's just step through the code. So how do they do it? So we have here. They start with pictograms, setting responses to certain stimulus. If the robot crosses a line, for instance, that prompts a response. Once the kids get comfortable with pictures, the app starts introducing actual text-based code. We yeah. already go up twice and then we turn. Yeah, we need a turn, so we're going to need a 20, but we're going to need to change okay. the direction. Those skills go well beyond, you know, being able to do things on a computer or an iPad or whatever. It's, it's really breaking down a, a big problem into much smaller chunks. Sounds great. Wonder if an old guy can pull it off too. On your mark, get set, go. Ah. Oh, collision. Zifthan Dubrovsky is one of the brainchilds behind the push for coding in the classroom. He is a robotics expert with Harvard and apparently much better at racing robots than me. <laughs> this is how I drive in the real world, just so you know. <laughs> Kids, watch out. David's on the road. Oh, yeah, went over the line. If you think about our world today, everything is digital, but we have no appreciation for how that works, and it's creating a generation of, uh, of people who are coding illiterate. Now that would include me, but Dubrovsky shows the basics easily. And it's built off of a, um, a foundation of if this, then that. So if the robot, using our color sensor, sees black in any of its sensors, then we'll make the robot glow yellow. And it should probably back up a bit. And sure enough. There you oh, go. There you go. And now it's waiting. It's waiting for your Oh, you oh, drove yeah. right back into it again. You better okay. think it's the other way. No, the other way. Ah! <laughs> so this is the thing that's great about you know this environment. Is yeah. That code never works the first time. Um, and you get to learn from your mistakes. When you've reached the limits of what you do in this environment. Oh, I see. You, you can, can go convert. to yeah, so the higher, more the higher challenging levels, level yes. of coding until you're at until well, you're at text-based languages. Which is what we think of when we think yes. of coding. So, at so how are you getting one actuator to do both? One on the back that actuates. The whole system is pretty inexpensive. Dubrovsky and his team of engineers designed the route so it could be mounted on an ordinary whiteboard, a stable in classrooms all over the place. It also uses the same tablets found in more and more schools, so minimal cost and maximum fun. You want to race? Yeah. You can call it. Okay. Are you marked? Get set. Go. Whoa, whoa. Is this what people with PhDs who run a robotics lab do all day? <laughs> uh, is this what all the years of education are all Yes, there? it is. You yeah. know, I get paid to work with robots. <laughs> You're distracting me. Stop. <laughs> Back in the classroom, the kids love this learning. It's really fun. I love it. I really like coding. It's really fun. But it's really easy. Like the buttons, they're like simple meaning, simple. I want to be what my dad is. And he's a coder. I might want to be a robot. Encoder. We want this to be in schools around the world as, as a tool that teachers can use to motivate kids to get excited about science and technology and, and engineering and mathematics. Indeed, these kids may be the computer engineers of tomorrow, but just as likely coding will be a skill needed by all. 
and they'll have the tools. David Crawman, CBC News, Boston.